Hello, today we're going to make some of the best biscuits I have a recipe for, okay? I have spent a lot of time looking for really good biscuit recipes, and this one really is ideal. It is, I have to attribute it to a uh, little uh, catering company in South Carol in Charleston, South Carolina. I have to give credit where credit is due. I mean, it is really, really good. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we need to do is we need to take a quarter cup of water, okay, room temperature at least. Okay, no more than 120 degrees. Okay, room temperature works fine. Unfortunately, it does take just a little bit longer to rise with that, but this way I can use filtered water that I happen to have on hand. Then one package of yeast into, into the water, okay? And a, one teaspoon of sugar. This feeds the yeast, and this allows the yeast to proof. Proofing the yeast is what we do before we mix it into everything to make sure that the yeast is good and alive, and it helps make sure your, your whatever you're making is going to rise. So we set this aside for a little bit. Then we take five cups of flour. Okay, this is... Seems like a pretty good amount of flour. Okay, five cups. And to the five cups of flour, we are going to add, um, okay. baking powder, sugar, salt, and baking soda. I know it seems odd adding yeast, baking powder, and baking soda, but trust me, this really, really works well. So we have the five cups of flour, okay. We have one tablespoon of baking powder, okay. We have a quarter cup of sugar, Okay, one and a half teaspoons of salt. High humidity, okay. A half teaspoon of baking soda. Now, when I put this recipe up, I will make sure to have a list of everything and the measurements, okay. So once we have all that, we want to mix it together, okay? You can either sift it if you wish, or you can just put it into a bowl and mix it mix it around pretty good, okay? Then what we want to do is, because while this is going on, the yeast is hopefully starting to work, so this is good, okay? So then we take one cup, I prefer to use butter. The original recipe calls for vegetable shortening, but I actually prefer to use butter for this. I get a, a better result with that. Okay, so at this point, we're going to need to mix this and we want to get this so that it gets kind of mixed in pretty, pretty well. Now, if you're going to be using a uh, KitchenAid, which if you can, I really recommend it. If not, you can do this by hand, okay? Just takes a little bit more work and it's a little messier, but I personally, I like my KitchenAid. <laughs> it really, really works really well, okay? And then what we'll do is we then take two cups of buttermilk or plain yogurt, 
okay? I actually have gotten really good results with the kefir style yogurt. It's closer to a buttermilk in texture and it works really, really well, okay? So, now we have all this. Now, what we want to do is we want to take a look at our yeast and see if it's starting to soften up and, okay. Give it a smell. It's gonna have a distinct smell, okay? And this is good. That's the yeast smell. And that means the yeast is working and growing and dissolving properly. So then what we do is we pour that, the, the yeast that we've combined with a little bit of sugar and water. Combine that in with the flour. And trust me, these make such good biscuits. They are really, really worth the extra effort that we get with this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this, okay? I'm going to use the KitchenAid to mix it. Yes, I could knead it by hand, okay? And if anyone needs a demonstration of how to do that properly, let me know, and I will do that in a future video to show you how to do that, okay? Because it can be a little bit tricky. Now, I'm gonna take this over to my KitchenAid, start it, start it mixing, okay? So give me just a second and I'll be right back with you. Now that everything's all mixed together, okay? This is what the dough should look like, okay? This is well mixed in and it's a very soft dough. So that means you'll have to use extra flour when shaping it, okay? You can shape it with your hands. You can roll it out and cut it with a biscuit cutter or with a knife or however is best for you, okay? I get a little bit less wastage if I pat it out on a floured surface and then cut it into squares with a knife. They still taste good. It doesn't matter the shape. What matters is what you want and how you like it, okay? At this point, if you want to, you can also mix in a little bit of uh, grated cheddar cheese to make the infamous cheddar biscuits, which are so good and so bad for us, but they taste good. Anyway, at this point, you want to let it rise for, put a clean towel over it, let it rise for at least one hour, okay? Or if you have time, put plastic over the top, put it in the refrigerator for three hours to overnight, okay? It tastes a little bit better if you can let it rise, if you can let it set for a little bit longer because it allows the flavors to blend together. But like I said, this biscuit recipe is wonderful. And then once it's cut out, let it rise again for about an hour. Or what you can do at this at that point is after they're cut out, you can freeze them, then put them into like a large Ziploc bag, which is something that I do quite often. And then you have them whenever you want them. And if you freeze them, just Pull them out, let them sit like overnight in the refrigerator, okay, to thaw, and then, and make sure they're covered, otherwise they'll dry out and it gets nasty. So then cover them, let them sit overnight in the refrigerator, or pull them out of the freezer, cover them, let them sit on the counter for about an hour and a half so that they'll thaw and rise at room temperature. And then all you have to do is bake them at 350 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes, okay? You're gonna wanna check on that. Now, if you really wanna finish it well, after they're done baking, brush them with a little bit of uh, room temperature butter. It'll melt into it and taste so good. Anyway, this is an absolute best biscuit recipe, and I wish you good luck with it and have fun. Enjoy it. Like I said, um, you can mix in some uh, 
cheddar cheese. You can mix, mix in some finely diced up chive. You can mix in a few different herbs. You can mix in some really, really finely minced up garlic or onion, okay? Depending on what flavor you want. But this is the base recipe. There are a lot of options you can do with this. And have fun and enjoy. And thank you for joining me. Well, hopefully you have a lot of fun with this and it tastes good. Have fun. Hello. Okay. Now we're going to do the baking of the biscuits. Remember we made them before and cut and shaped them. Whatever shape works for you. Okay. Now I've melted some butter. Okay. I have the oven preheated to 350 degrees. Now we're going to brush the butter on the top. Put the biscuits, however many you want to make, into the oven. They've been allowed to rise for an hour, about. Um, unless you're rising from frozen, then it takes about two, two and a half hours. Okay. Rising from raw takes 45 minutes to an hour. So it rises faster, but these do freeze very well. And then if you just follow a couple simple tricks, they come out very, very good. So once again, we're going to take them and brush some butter on top. I'm just doing one because that's all I need for this demonstration. Now I am using a clay baking sheet. Okay melted butter on top awesome perfect to go in now we put it into the oven disappear after about 20 to 30 minutes pull it out of the oven and then you have a really great biscuit the butter on top helps with the keeping it from cracking and drying out as it's cooking so it makes for a more moist biscuit okay it's just a simple trick but it does help okay and then if you want to hey when it's when it's done spread some more butter on it okay this is awesome so enjoy and like i said these are some of the absolute best biscuits i've ever been able to find okay now we have pulled the biscuit out of the oven okay and I'm going to brush a little bit more melted butter on top. This gives an excellent, more buttery taste to it, okay? And you don't have to do that. That part, brushing the butter on top before going into the oven or before serving is totally optional, okay? It's just a nice little added touch if you have the time and if you wish to. Now, a couple tips is I use baking parchment, okay? Because that helps with the cleanup and everything else, okay? Makes life a lot easier for me. I also use, as you can see, it's normally called a pizza stone, but I do almost anything that I can bake on top of it, I do, okay? And the baking parchment keeps me from having to constantly scrub it because these are hard to scrub, okay? Um, because they're slightly poor, so things get into them. As you can see, mine is not the prettiest looking, but I do... But I, but I do what I can. Now, last tip. Take a look at the bottom of this. Excellent. Now listen. Because it sounds hollow inside, that means it's cooked all the way through. And it's ready to eat. So now, go ahead and enjoy your biscuits. And these freeze really well before the, before the rising. Okay, so then I can pull them out of the freezer anytime I want them. So you have a great day and enjoy your biscuits.